Well, hello everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Not yet. Not yet. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> hello everyone. I'm just going to speak like that. Can you hear me? Awesome, folks. Great to see everyone. Uh, I hope you. If you're, if you're new here, I, I can see a couple of new faces. Uh, welcome. It's so great to have you. There I am. Great. It's so great to have everyone here. Um, and I want to I wanna invite you to a free cappuccino afterwards. Uh, it's on the house. It's on us. And we just want to bless you tonight. Uh, so before we get started, uh, I want you to turn your attention to the screens. We're going to watch the family news, some exciting things happening. Uh, so yeah, turn your, your eyes to the screens and let's check the family news. We believe that God is calling all the men of our city together to stand up and know the fullness of His life. To be manly, we must first be godly. Our society needs men who live rightly, act justly and love intensely. We're calling all the men to join us for worship and prayer as we trust to see a society change because of men who live godly lives and in such a way that it impacts a family, a community and a city. Join the call from the 26th to the 28th of August for the Movement Men's Camp at Vierschaas. Grief Share is a support group ministry that helps people heal from the pain of grief. The Grief Share video seminars, workbook exercises, and small group discussions give participants encouragement, useful advice, and hope. If you know people in your church or community who are grieving the death of a loved one, tell them about Grief Share or visit a Grief Share group yourself to heal from the pain of your grief. Begin your journey from mourning to joy at Grief Share.
great. So some awesome things happening. I uh, hope you're excited. Uh, just a small bumper. I'll remind you at the end, but for that men's camp, that's going to be awesome. So please visit the info desk to sign up for that. I want to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to read us a scripture before we go into a time of worship. This is in, in Psalm 8. You guys can actually just give us some background uh, that we can just get into the, the, the mode of worship, the, the atmosphere of worship. So listen to the psalm. It's awesome. David writes in Psalm 8, he says the following. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When, you, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him, yet you've made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands. You've, you've put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. Oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I shared that this morning as well, and, and it's such a special scripture to me today because today is Father's Day. Yes, any fathers in the house? The beautiful thing is that we've got a heavenly father. And he, in the scripture, we, we see this picture of David looking up to the stars and he looks at the moon and he says, God has placed the moon there with his fingertips. He's placed the stars in the heavens with his fingertips, with the smallest part of who he is. He's done that. He's done all these great things and yet he's mindful of me. Yet he looks at me and he, he puts me at the crown of his creation. So tonight I'm hoping that God would fill you with just a piece of, of himself, a piece of his love in your heart so that you may realize that although he created everything and he's in control of everything and he's given, been given all authority, he looks at you as a loving father and he wants to give you good things because he loves you and you're his child. So won't you in this moment just raise your hands as I pray for us before we enter this time of worship. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can come together as a congregation and worship your holy name. Jesus, I pray that you would come and touch every heart tonight. I pray that a piece of worship would be stirred in our hearts, Lord, that we would go forth and just worship you like we've never worshipped you before, Lord. I thank you that you are going to work in every single heart today. I praise you. Amen. Amen. Let's worship Jesus. Shout of praise There is a lion roaring Jesus 
Sing a little louder. Sing a little Lift your louder. Voice. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. playing just lift your prayer up to Jesus just lift your prayer your complaint whatever it is lift it up to him just pray to Jesus Yes, 
Father. Thank you that we can raise up our voices and just sing to you, Lord. Thank you that we can praise you with everything that we have and everything that we are. Jesus, I want to ask that as we continue now in worship, Lord, that you would come and speak to each one of us. That you would come and stir something in our hearts. Come and take us a step further in our worship, Lord. Come and challenge us in our worship, Lord. Because you are holy, Father. You are holy and worthy to be praised. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. Amen. 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 Just keep standing like that for a moment. I want us to continue in the space of worship. And and at the end of the service, we're going to go on and worship. We're not done yet. We're actually preaching on worship. And we want to practice that when we're done with the sermon. But in this moment, I want us to challenge to worship Jesus, even in our finances. That part where we, so many times we put that part aside. We say, this is mine. This is mine. But friends, Jesus is the owner of it all. Jesus is the... The, 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 the heir of it all, it all belongs to Him. Your life, your breath, your everything belongs to Jesus. Your job, it belongs to Him. Your money, it belongs to Him. Your children, they belong to Him. Your wife, she belongs to Him. Your husband, he belongs to Jesus. Jesus is the owner of it all. And when we come and we say, Lord, but I want to sow into your kingdom with the finances that you have given me, you are giving back to Him what He first gave you it's the same with worship when we worship when we lift up our lungs when we breathe breath we we take take a breath in and we breathe out i raise a hallelujah i'm giving back god the breath that he first gave me so in this moment on your chair there's a little envelope won't you really take that just just hold that in your hand take that in your hand and just for a moment won't you invite god into that space in your life We're not asking you to give us money because we need it. God is not after your money. He's after your heart. And He wants to infiltrate every single part of your life. And may this be a next step in your journey of worship to Jesus. Is to invite Him in deeper, even even deeper into your finances. And allow Him to just come and breathe there and come and move there. Just hold that envelope in your hand and just keep your mind in that space as I pray for you. Father, thank you that we can bring our finances to you as well. Thank you, Lord, that you give us breath in our lungs and life to our bodies, Lord, and strength to our bones, Lord. And thank you that you sustain us financially. Thank you that you sustain us in this world. Thank you that you are in control, Lord. We want to praise you with our finances. We want to sow into your kingdom that work can be done, that lives can be changed, Lord, and that your kingdom would expand. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to be seated. What a time of worship. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. So it's a very special day today. It's Father's Day, right? Am I wrong? No, it's Father's Day. I know. (laughs) It's actually my first Father's Day. Yes, I'm going to be a dad. It's going to be awesome. Uh, And uh, today is a very special day for many people. Uh, And uh, I'm sure Johanna is also going to share something about that. But For many people also, it's a very sad day. Maybe you have gone through a time where you've maybe lost your dad. And I want to just in this moment, uh, we're going to watch a a video uh, of of, uh, some of the young dads in our church. But after that, I want to make a moment where we just pray for you. If you're a father, if you lost a father, anything like that, we want to just pray for you and ask that God would come and bless you in a special way today in in terms of of being a father to you. So quickly turn your eyes to the screen. What we did is we we asked some of the young dads in our in our um, congregation, in our church, uh, some of the guys who are dads to be and some who have just become dads. And we asked them like, bring your best dad jokes. Bring your best, uh, like, do you know what a dad joke is? Johan said this morning, his kids call them bad jokes. <laughs> it's a joke that nobody laughs, but but it's okay because you're allowed to tell it because you're a dad. So he told them, come, you must now practice to be a dad. So bring your best dad joke, and this is what happened. Quickly turn to the screens. I cannot believe I was recently diagnosed with color blindness. I oh, know, eh? Came out of the purple. <laughs> How do you feel if you don't get any coffee? Depresso? <laughs> oh. 
Okay. What did the police officer say to his belly button? I was wondering why the frisbee kept getting bigger and bigger. Then it hit me. <laughs> what do you call a kung fu vegetable? Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up my seat to a blind person on the bus. That's how I lost my job as the bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sore throats are a pain in the neck. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. What do you call it when James Bond takes a bath? Mm -mm. Bubble 07. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, can we give them a hand? I think they were awesome. That's great. So I want to ask all the dads and the dads to be to quickly take a stand. Uh, you can you can just stand together with us, everybody. Come kind of on, I can spot you. There we go, Francois. There we go. And if you are a family member or a friend or somebody close to them, why don't you just in this moment just either put a, put your hand on their shoulder, just stretch a hand hand out to them, and I want to facilitate us just in a in a prayer for these men. Uh, you guys are so special to us, dads and dads to be. Uh, dads, we can't do it without you. And dads to be, your children aren't going to be able to do it without you. Um, so yeah, let's, let's pray for these guys. Thank you, Lord, for fathers. Thank you, Lord, that you have mandated them with a calling to be good fathers in this world, Lord, to, to echo the, the nature that you have and, and put that in themselves, Lord. And thank you that you have called them to be the best dads that they can be, Lord. Thank you that they show your glory by being good fathers to their children, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are going to sustain them. Thank you that you love them and that you care for them. And out of the overflow of what you give them, they can care for their, their, their families around them. We want to bless them tonight, Lord. I also want to pray for any person in the auditorium who's gone through loss, Lord. If they've maybe lost a father or a loved one, Father, I, I want to come and ask that you reveal yourself as a, a, a heavenly father to them who loves them deeply, Lord. Thank you that you will bring healing to those lives, bring healing to their stories, Lord. And we just want to praise you for the fact that you're a good, good father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Dads, you're awesome. You are great. Uh, Johan, I'm going to call you up. Oh, sorry. Can I ask Renee and Eliza to just hand all the dads, if you can just have your hand up and don't cheat here. Yeah? I'm watching you. Just keep your hand up. They're going to give you a special gift from, uh, just from our team. Yeah, be blessed, guys. Oh, hello from my side as well. It's great seeing you guys. Um, I want to start off with another video uh, that's more linked to uh, the, the sermon series that we're starting off tonight uh, regarding worship, but also a little bit linked to, to Father's Day. So uh, uh, take a look at this video quickly, please. Good, good father, that's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to love. 
your good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. That's special, isn't it? That's... Um that's something, something to, uh, so all of your dads to be and moms to be, that's what's waiting for you. It's going to be incredible. And if you are maybe a granddad, uh, that's also waiting for you. Uh, we are in that space currently. So just to say, I can so associate with that. You know, when I'm in worship, that's how I feel. I also got a lot of green stuff around my mouth and... <laughs> Um, no, no, this, that's, you know, it really speaks to my heart because I, I can't remember th that many sermons. Sermons from week to week speak to my heart, speaks to my soul, you know, and puts me into a certain direction. And then the next week there's a next sermon and, I, you know, you tend to forget sermons. I don't know how many sermons you can remember of all the hundreds and hundreds of sermons you have heard but I do remember the songs. I clearly remember so many of the songs that we have sung in, in past years gone by. And, uh, and even when we introduce a new song, you know, the Bible talks about sing unto the Lord a new song. There's something about a freshness in your, you know, in serving the Lord when you, when you sing new songs. And, and when Quibus and the team introduces a new song, takes me three or four times and then I'm there, you know, I'm, I can close my eyes and I can connect with God and it just, it does something really special in my heart and it, it brings up and, you know, certain emotion and connection with God. And so there's something special about worship and that's why we want to, in the next couple of weeks, we want to really just for a moment, just talk about worship, just think about that. And, and if we speak about worship, obviously, you know, worship is so much more than the singing that we do on a Sunday. Our whole lives is an offering unto God. Our whole lives flows from a place of worship. Um, and Kubis just mentioned the finances. When we move into that space, it's no different. It's, we worship God with our finances. We worship God with our talents, our treasures, our time. But with this series, we do want to focus on corporate worship. We, we, we do want to speak about also the part in the service where we devote that time in, uh, in singing unto God. So we're speaking about worship, and, and I was reminded of the story about David. You know, the Ark uh, of the Covenant in the Old Testament represented the presence of God. And... The ark at one point in time was taken out of Jerusalem. You know, it was stolen, it was taken out, and it was recovered by David. And then there was this point in time where David brought the ark back to Jerusalem, and he established a tabernacle on Mount Zion to place the ark in, the ark of the covenant. But he placed it in a different tabernacle than the one where they would do all the other sacrifices, uh, you know, and all the religious uh, um, things that they did in that specific tabernacle. He built a different one just for a period of time, just to put a focus on the presence of God or the, this, um, this Ark of the Covenant that represented the presence of God. And what's cool about this whole story is what David did for this period of time is he, they, they had no tent covers as they would have had on, on the other tab tabernacle and in, um, uh, later on in, in, uh, in that period of time in the temple as well where it would be hidden, there was no covers. It was open for everybody to see. And then David went and he appointed musicians, 280 musicians. And here was the, this was the criteria they had to uh, have played whatever they played the instrument for at least 25 years. You know, so these were 
skilled musicians. They, when they played, you know, you listened. And they were appointed to play 24-7. So right through the day, right through the night. And, and here's what blows my mind. This happened for a period of 30 years. So you can imagine a whole generation grew up with worship day and night. You know, and, and back in those days, in Jerusalem, it wasn't that big um, a city as Joburg would be. You know, there's a lot of people living there, but it wasn't so big. And there wasn't so many noises. You know, cars honking and cell phones ringing and generators starting. And, you know, it's at the, at the still of the night. They could hear the worship just going over the city. Imagine that. Imagine falling asleep to worship and waking up to worship and going to work to worship and, you know, being on your break and, and experiencing worship constantly. And you would think about that and think, David, goodness, you know, we would have a week of worship and we'd be tired at the end of the week. <laughs> um, and we just think about that, and, and maybe wasn't that just taking a, a step too far? Wasn't it a little bit too much? But the answer is no. Because David, as a worshiper, many of the Psalms was written by David. David was the one playing the harp for King Saul. I'm sure David, as a young shepherd boy, you know, um, he led the choir of sheep. Ba, 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 you know, so, worshiping God is, is all he had to do. And besides fighting the lions and the bears, trying to steal the sheep. But, but listen, David understood something about the value of worship. And so that's why we want to take out some time and, and um, really just with, with regards to singing and, and, you know, as they did in the tabernacle and just praising God day and night. So you want to take some time and and reflect upon that. And think about when we create moments of of worship, of singing, why? What is that? Is it just something we tick off the list? Is it something we wait to, you know, to go by? Or is there a a deeper meaning and purpose that that God has for our time of worship uh, during service, in times when we close You know, the door and we go into our inner room when we're in the car and we put on a CD. What's the purpose of that? So there's three things I want to bring to your attention. The first thing I want to speak about is is that God is a worshiping God. What do I mean by that? Listen to this scripture in Zephania 3 verse 17. It starts off like this. It says, the Lord, your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save And he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. And he will exalt over you with loud singing. With loud singing. God's a singing God. You know, we often think about, if we heard the stories about Lucifer and how he was appointed the main worship leader. But but I want to say that You know, he has nothing that doesn't come from God. God created Lucifer originally. And and so often we will give away territory, say, no, this, you know, because he now has brought all these horrible songs or whatever, you know, uh, uh, that that we we give away the territory of music to, to, to Lucifer. But I want to tell you that it comes from God's heart. Music and the power thereof. It's not territory we should be giving away. It's territory that we should take and and make our own. That word exalt that is is written there in in Zephaniah. Uh, There I'm pronouncing it rightly. Zephaniah is, uh, the word exalt means to jump up and twirl around with joy. (laughs) You you, you see these pictures of, of children running and they're jumping up and you know, the little girls jump up and they twirl around because, and laughter coming out of their bellies because of the pure joy. That's an expression of how God feels about you and me. That's the beauty of this. Listen to this in Psalm 
32 verse 7, it says, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. You surround me with songs of victory. There's something that happens in the moment of worship. It's a moment of revelation that happens when there's this atmosphere of worship. God loves an atmosphere of worship. And, you know, he, he tends to also come and reveal something of his character and his heart to you and me in, in those moments of worship. And so if you're struggling to hear God's voice, it's, it's a good place to start to focus on your moments of worship, to just to allow yourself to go to that place. You know, when, where you can just open up your heart towards God uh, and allow yourself to, to tune your spirit into what God wants to reveal to you. The second thing I want to talk about is Jesus. God is a worshiping God, but Jesus is a worshiping son. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus loved to sing. He loved to sing. Listen to this. Matthew 26, 30 says, Then they sang a hymn, and went out to the Mount of Olives. They sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Here's the background to the story. This is right before Jesus is actually crucified. This is just after they've had, you know, the last meal where, where Jesus introduces communion, the last supper. And, and in that, he's actually revealing to his disciples that he has to go and die. Peter objects and, you know, Jesus quiets him down, but, but he knows, Jesus knows what's lying ahead. He's about to suffer the most difficult uh, time of his life. But as, as just before they go out to the Mount of Olives where he would be arrested, here's what they do. They're singing, and they're not singing just one song. Um, they sing a selection of psalms. In fact, it was Psalms 113 through to 118. And I want you to listen to what they, they were singing. Uh, Psalm 113 says, Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. You know, we used to sing that song, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You guys remember that? Blessed be. Imagine, Jesus is on his way to Calvary to lay down his life. And he's going, blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I don't know if that was the rhythm, but, but that was the heart of what, the, what they were singing. Listen to this. Um, everywhere from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For he loves us with unfailing love. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord, Psalm 117. He was praising God. This selection of psalms is known as the Halalia um, songs. Halalia meaning halal means praise and, and Yah referring to Yahweh God. It's not the halal chickens that you buy in spa. <laughs> It's the halal, yeah, it's, it's where our word hallelujah also comes from. It means praise God. And how it would work is, you know, Jesus would sing these phrases and he would sing a phrase and the disciples would respond by saying halal, yeah, praise God. You know, he, he would say, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord and they would say halal, yeah, praise God. And it would be this beautiful response, almost as we had just now when, when Quirbus and Elisa were singing out, sing a little louder, and we would respond, sing a little louder. And it would be this moment of connection, this moment of worship. And, and the disciples didn't quite understand that what Jesus was speaking about was about to happen. He was about to be arrested. But he knew. He knew, and it, it, it's not as if, you know, he didn't have any emotions. He was right there in Gethsemane on his knees, and he was sweating blood, and he was stressed. That's why he was sweating blood. 
So why would he be singing? Isaiah 61, there's the scripture that says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's, it's referencing to Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then verse 3 goes on to say, to give unto them the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why was Jesus worshiping? Because he was readying his soul. He was getting himself ready. He was getting himself in that space where, you know, where he could go through and, and let this cup pass. But not his will, the, the Father's will be done. So that's what, what he prayed. Let this cup pass by. But Lord, I will do whatever you ask me. Father, I will walk wherever you ask me to go. And the worship geared him for exactly that. It got him ready for whatever difficulty he might face. And, um, and then we read in, in Hebrews 2, verse 11 to 12. It says that Jesus and the people he makes holy all belong to the same family. That is why he isn't ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Now listen to this part. He says, he even said to God, I will tell them your name and sing your praises when they come together to worship. Listen carefully to that. He says, I will tell them your name and I'll show them how to worship when they gather together. You know that Jesus lives within you. Through his Holy Spirit. He is in you and you are in him. And he is in the Father the Bible talks about. And so I want to say to you that the Jesus in you longs to call out to the Father and to worship him. Now if you feel that something stirring here in your heart and your spirit in a moment of worship. It's because you allowed yourself to, to listen to and be, to be honed in to the Jesus within you that's calling out to his father. That's why often you, you will see people just being in, in a moment of really emotional, intense emotional space, like that little baby. Now, I don't know if that baby was crying for the song or just, you know, his mom's voice just moved him to tears. But, but I can tell you that I've seen adults crying why? Because that, that spirit within them, Jesus within them, loves his Father eternally, perfectly. And that power flows through you in a moment of worship. Man, is that not incredible? That's so special. The, the, the last thing I want to refer to is, I, I, I want to talk to you about the New Testament church that was a worshiping church. So, the, the rituals that we heard about in the tabernacle that I referred to earlier on, there was many rituals that they performed in those t tabernacles. None of them we, we still do today. You know, we don't bring in an ox and we slaughter him and we, we don't have all of those different rituals. The, the one thing that we still do from those days, back in those early, early years, is that we still worship. We still sing. We still use our voices to proclaim the goodness and the greatness of God. And so in the New Testament church, we still see that as well. Listen to this, Colossians 3 verse 16. It says, let the words of Christ in, in all their richness live in your hearts and make you wise. Use these words to teach and counsel, counsel each other. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. James 5.13, are any of you suffering? They should keep on praying about it. And those of you who have reason to be thankful should continually sing praises to the Lord. Yanni Diekas, he's our pastor in London, and he used to be your worship leader as well. Listen to what he, he writes. He says, spontaneous praises is the language of those who are excited and thrilled about their relationship with God. And that's what we do as churches when we, we're singing. We are pro proclaiming that we are thrilled about God. 
We are saying something about our relationship with God when, when we utter our words of songs. And the way we do that gives away something about, about that relationship. You know, we are, are saved freely by grace and we can do nothing to earn God's favor or His merit upon our lives. We can do nothing. But we can be in closer relationship with Him. We can be in different spaces with regards to our relationship with Him. And, and the more intimate we become with Him, it, it will show up in our moments of worship. And so what's the things that holds up us back when, when we are in worship? First of all, it's, it's a lack of knowledge about who God really is. Or maybe in that moment, forgetting who God really is. We, we're praising the King of Kings. We are bringing glory to the Lord of hosts. And, and we can never forget that. For us as humans, it's, uh, it's so easy to come into a space of routine, you know. It's, oh yes, it's that time of service where we sing songs. But it's so much more than that. It's our moments of proclaiming that He is God Almighty. Our prayer, our moments of prayer often you know, revolves around our needs and, and, and perhaps other people's needs. That, if you think about that, when you pray, that's often where we go. But worship, either through prayer or song, is vocabulary about God. It gives us moments to just, you know, talk about and sing about how we feel about God, how we see God, and how we see ourselves in Him. And so that's where God wants to take us. He, he wants to bring us into a space where we understand Him better. The second thing that could sometimes hinder us is this guilt conscience. A guilt and sin conscience. You know, if you feel guilty, if you did something wrong, if you're just so aware of, you know, the fact that you are not perfect, um, and, and you come into church, you would often, what, what the enemy would do is he would remind you of, something you did wrong. And then you have no freedom. You know, you don't have the boldness to, to worship. When you lift up your hand, you feel, ah, oh, man, I'm fake. But the Bible says that because Jesus is our high priest, we have boldness to enter into the throne room of God, to enter into His presence. He wants to bring you into that space to change you. <laughs> So that you become more and more who you, He created you to be. So that you become more and more the identity that, you know, the Bible says when we, we give our lives to Christ, we are a new creation. And when we worship and we become aware of who God is, we become aware of who we are, then we'll start acting in that way. And so it's ludicrous to think I must worship less so that I have less revelation of who I am, so that I have, I'm less empowered to start living the life that He has set out for me. It is in those moments that we most need to come to God, in moments of worship. The third thing that sometimes is a, is a hindrance is, is the impact and influences of negative emotions. You know, when you feel, just don't feel like it, or you're tired, or... You know, you're angry at somebody. or um, it's, it's those moments when your emotions get in the way. But there's the story about Paul and Silas. If you remember that in, in, in the book of Acts where they were thrown into jail. First they were hit with sticks. And they were beaten. And they were hurting. And they were thrown in jail. And what, what do they do? They break out in worship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they break out in worship. And that creates this atmosphere again where God reveals himself and the prison uh, shakes and the doors open and a man, a heathen, is saved in that whole process. As, as Christians, we should, we should discipline our minds. That we don't link our worship to the way we feel. When it feels good, 
then I'll go for it. We worship because God is good. That's it. We worship from that space. We worship ourselves into a space where thankfulness and gratefulness and understanding of who God is trumps the circumstances. Lift up the garments of praise for that spirit of heaviness. We should never allow those circumstances. I know it's easier said than done. Listen, I'm often in that space where I just don't feel like it in the moment or something troubling me. And um, I am andag of labor. Attention deficit. Yeah, I'm in that space. Okay. So it's easy for my attention just to go to another space. And it's, it's difficult for me. It's often difficult for me. But that's where David says. He says, he speaks to his soul. He says, oh my soul, why are you so downcast? He takes control of his soul. You know, he takes authority over his soul and says, I will praise God. Brings his mind back to that moment. The last one is, is that often we, we are shy and we hold back. You know, and we, we hide behind that idea of I'm an introvert. That's not my personality. Um, but, but I want to say, you know, that when your team plays and they win, you know, or you, you, your dad gives you a brand new cell phone or a new uh, car, <laughs> you don't go, oh, thank you, you know. It's, oh, that's good, you know. My team won. <laughs> so even the introverts, there's this moment of excitement. Listen, listen to this. C.S. Lewis wrote this many years ago. He says, just as men spontaneously praise whatever they value, so they spontaneously urge others to join them in praising it. The psalmist, in telling everyone to praise God, are doing what all men do when they speak of what they care about. God invites us into that space where, where we, we, just honestly, you don't have to fake that just because everybody else is jumping up. But there's a passion in your heart for God. And, and the invite is to respond to that passion proportionately to what God has done in your life. Kubis, you and the guys can... Join me on stage. I want to end off with this, with this portion of Scripture. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes as I read that. This is from the book of Revelation. And it, it's talking about an environment of worship. And just because it's a revelation, don't think it's something that will one day come. This is worship in the context of eternity. It's, it's things that's going on right now as we're speaking in the heavenlies, in the spiritual realm. There's a constant worship. It talks about the prayers and the worship of us, the people of God. You'll you'll hear this. But close your eyes just as I read out of Revelations 4. And I want you to see this picture in in your mind's eye. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. And in the center and around the throne with four living beings, each covered with eyes, front and back. And the first of these living beings had the form of a lion. The second looked like an ox, and the third had a human face. And the fourth had the form of an eagle, with wings spread out as though in flight. And each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings were covered with eyes inside and out. And day after day, night of the night, they kept on singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. And whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship the one who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created everything, and it is for your pleasure that they exist and were created. Revelations 5. I looked, 
and I saw a lamb that had been killed, but was now standing between the throne and the four living beings and among the 24 elders. And he had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God that are sent out into every part of the earth. And he stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And as he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense. The praise, our praise, the praise of God's people. And they sang a new song with These words, you are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it. For you were killed and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and the people and nation. And you have caused them to become God's kingdom and his priests. They will reign on the earth. And then I looked again and I heard the singing of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and the living beings and the elders and they sang in mighty chorus the lamb is worthy the lamb who was killed he is worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and they also sang Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one who sits on the throne and the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped God and the Lamb. This is why we worship. This is the space that God invites us into when we sing during during services. And so for the next four weeks, look at me quickly. For the next four weeks, we're going to take this picture, and specifically this picture of the four living beings talks about the the eagle and and the face of a man and, and the ox and the lion going to look at each one of those want to say something to us talks about an aspect of of our worship and we want to delve into that so we want to ask you not to miss that but tonight I just want you to hear that God is inviting you into a eternal space when we worship we step into that space where millions of millions of angels are crying out singing Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And these pictures of these these beings, you know, and hope the weirdness of the eyes and the wings didn't freak you out, but the, 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 the angels singing and the 24 elders singing and these wonderful beings just worshiping the one sitting on the throne. We step into that holy space every time we sing. And so even when my heart is overflown with some sort of negative emotion, I remind myself of this. That this is the most holy, awesome privilege I have right now to lift up my hands and bring praise to the one who deserves it. So we want to invite you as we are going to move into the second part just of our worship to stand with us. And we do exactly that. Let's worship.
You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect.
There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those who are holy and holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside. Open up my eyes in wonder So who you are and fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me
Father, let us continue to just grow in your love. Let us continue to grow in the way we worship you, Lord. I pray for each person in the auditorium now. I pray that you would come and touch their hearts, Lord. In these next couple of weeks as we're speaking about worship, Lord, I pray that you would come and have an appointment with each person. Come and stretch us in the way we worship you, Lord. Come and have your place as a centerpiece of my life, Lord. Come and have your way, Lord. We praise you as a congregation. Amen. 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 Awesome. You guys are welcome to take your seats. We've come to the end of our service, and it's been, as I said, uh, it's been so great to have everyone here, especially if you are here for the first time. It's awesome to have you. We want to bless you with a free cappuccino. Monique's going to organize that for you. So just head out to the coffee shop. Go out left. You'll see the coffee machine there. We want to bless you. Uh, have a great evening, and we'll see you next week. I'm not missing anything. Oh, almost forgot. Men's camp. Just remember, if you want to be part of that whole thing, if you want to go on the men's camp, you want more information about the men's camp, just visit the info desk. Somebody will be there to help you. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you next week. Be blessed. Amen.